Hey, Chuck, I got another explainer for you. All right. So I, I want to talk about Stonehenge. Okay. I've never, we, have, we, don't have, we don't have an explainer on Stonehenge. And, and the reason why it's like in my head, well, first, it's kind of always in my head because of Manhattan Henge. Right. Uh, but the, it's in my head, especially this time around, because, I don't know if you knew this, but much of the staff of Star Talk was invited to go to London to do a Star Talk show in front of an audience at a conference sponsored by Privateer and Omega Watches. And that conference was all about space sustainability. I know you're a sustainability guy. I don't know if you ever I thought am. about it with regard to space. Of course, yeah. I mean, uh, right, because what? space, it's like if you put up too many satellites, is that sustainable? Right. You know, Correct. is there room for another satellite? And what are you doing to the astronomers who want to look up at night? All right. So, and it just happened to coincide, just happened to coincide with the summer solstice. Nice. We were there on June 21st. And I, it occurred to me, like, at the end of the day, and I'm saying, wait a minute, we just did this, and it's, this is the solstice is today. Wait a minute. We're, we're, we're a driving distance from Stonehenge. Oh, my gosh. And so, so, so Privateer it was, it, and Omega were kind enough to, like, charter a bus for us on the spot. Right? We had to get a driver, get, you know, pull him out of whatever he was doing because mm -hmm. it was very spontaneous. And we drove out there in the middle of the night to watch the sunrise. Over Stonehenge. Now, I am unfamiliar with this company, Privateer, and I am also uh, curious as to why they did not invite Chuck Nice on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer the first question only. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, Steve Wozniak, who we, we, we have, he oh, was I, a guest on Star Talk recently. I know Steve Wozniak. Uh, th it's, yeah. it's a pet project of his. And he's okay. invited some other folks who care about the future of space. Uh, okay. Steve Wozniak, one of the co-founders co of Apple. Co-founders of Apple, back yeah, in the day. Yeah. Back now, in he's, the day. he's the guy that you see next to Jobs when they're sitting with a tiny little computer like in somebody's basement or garage. It's yeah, Woz, in the parents' basement. In the right. parents, <laughs> it, it's, it's the Woz that's sitting next, <laughs> that's standing next to, uh, to Steve right, Jobs. Right, right, the two of them together, right. Yeah, the, yeah. Woz wired all the circuit boards. It was that's not right. yeah. uh, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs had the ideas, Woz right. made the stuff happen. Made it happen. So, so anyway, so as it turns out, a guy who makes stuff happen, he cares about the future sustainability of space. So anyway, so that's why we were there. Cool. In London, and we took this jaunt out. We had half our staff, half the Star Talk staff, with us out to Stonehenge, and in the middle of the night, spontaneously decided to do that. And so, no, it was fun. And in fact, we took video just visiting, you know, Big Ben and the bridges and and Stonehenge. And uh, we're going to post that pretty soon. Nice. So look for that. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm I'm just going to go ahead and and put it out there. I don't know what Stonehenge is. I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't understand what the hype is. All On right, the one okay. hand, they tell me that it's some kind of alien crap. On the other <laughs> hand, it's uh, some some way of the uh, these ancient uh, druids who were able to uh, look at the constellations and decipher things through these big, you know, stones. Some say it's a religious thing. I gave up on Stonehenge so long ago because I've heard so many things. Okay, I went on an expedition, and the expedition head, his name was Gerald Hawkins, and he wrote a book called Stonehenge Decoded, which came out was in the late 60s, early 70s, where he was one of the first, if not the first, to identify it as an astronomical observatory rather than simply a religious... Ga you know, a, 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 an occasion for religious gatherings of ancient peoples. Okay. And so he was our expedition head. We uh, took a visit to Stonehenge itself, and then we went on to the Uncharted Stones up in Scotland, in a little near a little town called Kilmartin, Kilmartin, Scotland. Oh, I have a friend and named Laurie some, Kilmartin. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. there are stones there in 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 some farmer's field. And we were there. Uh, I was there in the astronomical team. We had uh, excavators. We had um, uh, 
uh, anthropologists, and we had archaeologists. Right. And so all of us were there analyzing these stones. And so it sensitized me. It, it was a baptism into the fact that ancient peoples cared about the sky on a level that maybe most people would not give them credit for doing. Hmm. And so uh, Stonehenge had long been associated at, with the work of the Druids, but carbon dating and other sort of uh, methods and tools to figure out when the stones arrived there and were erected, has it predate the Druids by upwards of a thousand years. Oh, so wow. it could not have it could not have been the Druids. All okay? right. That does not mean the Druids didn't fully embrace the existence of Stonehenge. Well, it was kind okay? of hard not to. They're giant. Yeah, rocks. just hard not to. Yeah, <laughs> what it, it, somebody else built it, use it, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. T totally take advantage of it in whatever way you might feel the need. And so Stonehenge is a set of circles of huge stones. I mean, these things are way bigger than a human being. It's human beings stacked two or three times high. And these stones weigh multiple tons. It's, it's made out, it's called bluestone that is not available in the area where Stonehenge was erected. Oh, look at that. We're, so we've, we've they, they imported the only the finest blue stone <laughs> for our money. Imported from Italy. <laughs> mm, indeed. Oh, you thought Italian marble was something to wonder. Oh, no, my friend. It's all about the blue stone now. <laughs> so these are, these are blue stones, and they came from miles away, okay? Mm -hmm. And so the question was, why would anyone do this? And what was it about? What motivated them? What was driving them? And the most obvious thing, if you look at it for the whole year and map it out, I got it. is that Aliens. there is an, an alignment of what's called the heel stone. This is a stone that sits well outside this circle of stones. And if you look through an opening in the stones, at the heel stone, on the morning of the summer, the summer solstice, the sun rises exactly over the heel stone. Oh, wow. So it's a very astronomical moment for this mm -hmm. thing. And you, it, whether or not you say it's a, religious, uh, it, it's a religious monument, what you can say is, if it is religious, that religion cared about the summer solstice. The solstice. Okay. Right. They, it cared, all right. So there it is. So the summer solstice is the summer solstice whether or not you layer religious belief systems on top of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. What Gerald Hawkins further did was he noted that there were these holes dug in the ground, 56 of them, outside the perimeter of the outer rim of stones. But these are vertical stones. They're called menhirs. And the, and, and it, it's the hinge, what I think of as these vertical structures made of stone. Stonehenge. When I got to Manhattan, we have vertical structures that are buildings, okay? Steel and, and glass. And glass. And, 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 okay? So cement. then I, I'm not, I didn't want to call it building henge. That wasn't local enough. So I, no. so I called it Manhattan henge. Took a photo of it and then published that in 2002. And then since then, I'm delighted to announce that tens of thousands of people flood More the streets that. for the two days of the year where this alignment of the in this case, the setting sun aligns with the street grid. It has nothing to do with the solstice because when they laid out the street grid of Manhattan, they weren't thinking climate or, I mean, uh, time of the year or anything. They just want to do what fit to the geometry of Manhattan Island, which is long and skinny, all right? So that's all they did, which means when that aligns, as it's some other day, not the solstice. The New York Times tried to call it the, uh, the, the Manhattan solstice, it's like, right. no, because yeah. it, it, it has nothing to do with the solstice. It has nothing to do Back with the up. solstice. Right. Okay. Exactly. Just like stay in your lane. Just, I got this. Okay. Right. So I was just delighted to announce that tens of thousands of people flood the streets for reasons other than Con Ed digging holes. Okay. Yep. Now, yes. By the way, people, uh, for those of you listening, uh, uh, you just found out that Neil deGrasse Tyson is single handedly responsible for hundreds of people every year getting hit by a car. Uh, no, <laughs> <stop>. <laughs> Which is you know, I went true. to the police department and I said, you know, why don't we organize this right. and block off the streets? No, we need authorization from the mayor's office. It's like it's going to happen anyway. Yeah. 
It's not like people are going to flood the streets only with your permission. They're doing it anyway. So I'm alerting you of this. And so I got the runaround. I'm very disappointed. Uh, maybe by now they're going to figure it out. But anyway, back to Stonehenge. So there are these 56 circles that surround the stones. And Gerald Hawkins, in the early days of scientific computing, put these coordinates into his computer. And he found that there's a configuration of these circles that enable you to predict eclipses. Eclipses recur on what's called a Saros time scale. All and a right. Saros is the time it takes the sun and the moon to realign in a configuration that would give you another eclipse. Because the moon's orbit around the Earth is tipped relative to Earth's orbit around the sun. What that means is you don't get a lunar eclipse every full moon and a solar eclipse every new moon. If that was all lined up, you get eclipses twice a month. Right. But we only get them every couple of, you know, every two and a half years or so. And so, so it's only when that geometry lines up. And the, 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 there are families of eclipses that repeat every 18.6 years. And it's called the, the lunar Saros. That's wow. what it's called. Okay? So now, watch what happens. If you take 18.6 and multiply it by three... Mm -hmm. you get 56 holes. You get to 56. So he viewed these holes as a, as a mechanism to get some handle on the prediction of eclipses, which would have granted these ancient peoples some understanding of the motions of the heavenly bodies that no one would ever give them credit for. Absolutely. Okay. Later, decades later, there's been some re-questioning as to whether this was actually an eclipse predictor. But no one is questioning the alignment on the heelstone of the summer solstice. Anyhow, it's still there. It's a national monument. It's protected. It's still in the middle of a, of a, of a farm field. Um, but uh, everybody's in agreement, and there are tours that go there. You can't touch the stones anymore. When I was there, you could climb on the stones. That, that's how old I am. Nice. Back in my day. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Back in my day, we didn't give a damn about Stonehenge. <laughs> no, we <laughs> Well, we climbed all over it. We sat there. We drank beer on it. Some people actually made love on it. It was a wonderful Ca thing. Caught my initials. I no. caught my initials in Stonehenge. <laughs> <laughs> the all old men on the porch exactly. uh, sound like that. I remember when rocks were more than rocks, and you could actually go to Stonehenge and put your name in it. Ah, man, those were the days. <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, there are people who don't believe or recognize that ancient peoples had the same brains as we do. I mean, they, they're human beings. They can be as clever or as stupid. Uh, it's, they just had less technology. So you can ask, how long does it take to find bluestone and drag it, you know, dozens of miles to a location? It takes long if you don't have tractors and, and trucks. and all, But it, it doesn't take forever. No. Okay. And so they, they, they knew about the wheel. You could roll on, on logs, logs. and things. Yeah. And ropes and things. So yeah. this is not an impossible thing to imagine. But people who do find it hard to imagine, they're quick to say what, Chuck? Um, that it was aliens. Aliens? Yeah. So here's, here's my... I'm going to end with this comment about aliens, okay? Mm -hmm. Just because you can't figure out how ancient peoples did it, doesn't mean aliens <laughs> helped them. <laughs> All right. This has been yet another Star Talk explainer. This one on Stonehenge and Manhattan Henge and the Druids and all of the above and not aliens. Chuck, always good to have you here. <laughs> always a pleasure. <laughs> all right. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson for Star Talk. As always, keep looking up.